Hey guys, uh, we are back in the afternoon session of the Virtual Developers Conference 2020. Uh, I'm Ish and my co-host Girish is here. So, so Girish, uh, would you mind to give us some details about the next presentation? Yes. Because I yes. do have some sort of conflict of interest here. Okay, yeah. Now we are back with an amazing talk on Kubernetes, introducing through OpenSUSE microservices and Kubi. This session will be presented by Ish Sukun, again, uh, by, uh, he's, a, he's a system architect at LSL Digital, an OpenCC member. The second speaker will be Chite Sham, who is also uh, working at uh, LSL Digital, and a system engineer, yeah, he's a, he's a system engineer at LSL Digital. Let's welcome him, him Ish. Uh, give me a second. So... Uh, probably we need to inform our viewers that it's a pre-recorded session, but both Chitesh and myself will be present uh, after the uh, the recorded video to answer questions. All right? Okay. okay. Uh, hey there, Chitesh. How are you doing? Hello, Ish. Hello, hello Girish. I'm fine, thank you. So, uh, how I is Dave going? Uh, oh, go on, go on. You are Dave God is going great. Uh, I was hosting at the uh, Avengers Tower the whole day, and uh, some of you might uh, have popped in, in in there. And Ish is doing Ish and Girish are doing an amazing job here in Krypton. Uh, I'm looking forward to to this uh, to to our session. Thank, thank you very much, Dave, for the kind words. Uh, uh, so yes, uh, guys. Um, and girls, so uh, we are going to run the recorded video. It's about uh, Kubernetes. Uh, just to give you a heads up, uh, it's going to be in two parts. Uh, the first part, I'm going to cover a little bit about uh, Putman. And in the second part, uh, actually, it will be mostly um, Chitesh who is going to cover the Kubernetes part. Right, Chitesh? So yeah, I will. Let's... No. Go on. I will do a brief uh, introduction to. Kubernetes architecture and uh, how you can leverage open that. All right, so here we go, and we will be back uh, to maybe to for some more comments and questions. Hello, and welcome to the Virtual Developers Conference 2020. I thank you for viewing this presentation on Kubernetes. This presentation will be covered in two parts. In the first part, I will cover the basics of containers using Pudman, and the second part. My colleague Chitesh will talk about Kubernetes. My name is Ish Sukan and I am a systems architect at La Sentinelle Limited. I like hanging out at local tech events and I usually write about those events and meetups on my blog hacklog.in. I am an OpenSUSE member and currently volunteer in the project's election committee. Let's start by learning about the basics, Linux namespaces. Linux namespaces are the building blocks of containers. They allow Linux to abstract and isolate resources such that they appear distinct from the global resources on a system. There are seven namespaces and I highly recommend that you read about them before starting your adventure in the container world. LSNS is a useful command that will allow you to explore further and learn about namespaces on your machine. Container runtimes are programs that create and run containers. They are usually categorized into low-level and high-level depending on the features they provide. Popular container runtimes are Containerd, Docker, RunC, etc. Have you ever wondered what a container is made of? Well, Scopio is a tool that allows us to peek inside of a container and analyze its content. We can decompress the different layers of a container image and the files contained within can be accessed and analyzed. In this way, we can learn about the anatomy of a container image. Podman is a container engine that boasts on being daemonless and extremely lightweight. Podman can manage pods, containers, and images. Container images are stored in image registries. 
When Podman is run and an image name is, is, is specified, the process first looks at the local image registry and if the image is not found locally, it will query a remote container image registry. Information about container registries is stored in the slash edc slash containers slash registries.conf configuration file. Remote container registries can be added or blocked in this specific file. The Podman info command displays a bunch of useful information such as where container resources are stored. Podman has similar options and flags like Docker. In this slide, you can see the options that allows us to mount a volume to a path on the host machine and to map the containers port 80 to the host port 8080. Commands can be executed inside a running container also using the Podman exec option. Here is a bunch of commands that will update information on running containers. Running containers and images can be analyzed using the Podman inspect command. For example, inspecting a running container can provide us the container's network information and the mount points. Systemd can be used to start and stop containers. This is helpful in cases where we would like containers to start up as the machine is booted up. In the Kubernetes world, a pod refers to a unit of deployment, that is an instance of an application. Well, to make it simpler than that, it would be right to say that a pod can contain a single or multiple containers and the containers share the same namespaces. A Docker file contains instructions to build a container. Podman can read a Docker file and build a container image which is immediately available in the local registry. Lastly, every container inside a pod is monitored by a process called Conmon. It is Conmon that allows communication between Podman and the container. In the second section of this presentation, my colleague Chitesh will talk about Kubernetes. Hello all, my name is Chitesh Ram. I am a system engineer at La Sentinelle Limited. I manage the servers of La Sentinelle sister companies, such as L'Espress Property.mu, L'Espress Cause, Lacaz, and so on. I am a Linux enthusiast. I use Linux free and free and open source softwares every day. I also try to experiment with new FOSS softwares, new distros on my free, free time. And as a system engineer, I think it's very important. It's important in a way to build a good knowledge on various tools that is either going to make you more productive or help you be more creative whenever you encounter new problems. Um, I'm also part of the ecosystem of Mozilla Firefox, which uh, they call Mozillian. What is a Mozillian? A Mozillian is someone who participates actively in uh, the Mozilla project and, uh, and there are various ways you can participate, such as doing translation tasks, contributing to code base, uh, contributing to documentation or what I've been doing is advocating for the internet health uh, since the last since last year actually uh, last year I was a guest speaker at the University of Middlesex and I dove into Mozilla's internet health report 2019 highlighting various aspects that uh, are affecting our usage of internet uh, mostly, I elaborated on research and stories across five issues, which is which are privacy, openness, digital inclusion, web literacy, and uh, web decentralization. Uh, if you want to know more, hit me up on Twitter. My username is Ketchup. Uh, now, enough about me. I'm going to pick up where Ish left. 
and continuing from Dockerfy. When Docker continued to thrive managing microservices and containers, uh, a container management system became a paramount requirement. During that time, Google already was running a container-based management infrastructure for many years. And in that era, the company made a bold decision to open source uh, that in-house project they called Borg. Borg was key to running Google services like Gmail and Google Search. To enhance functionalities of container management system, the company came up with Kubernetes, an open source project that automates the process of deploying, uh, managing multi-container applications at uh, large scale. Kubernetes came into existence around mid 2014 and in sh in a very very short amount of time expand it uh, had grown up and scaled as an open source project which was engineered from Google and Red Hat and many other companies contributing to the project open source as well that's a bit of story now moving on uh, yeah before we move on I like to brush up uh, a little bit on containers quickly to understand Kubernetes, you must first know what uh, a container really is. Basically, a container virtualization is a partitioning method uh, which is run at the OS level and is based on the technology of LXC, Linux Containers for short. The goal is to run isolated uh, uh, Linux environment in a container while sharing the same kernel. The container virtualizes only runtime environments such as processor, RAM, file system, and so on. It does not virtualize the whole machine like a VM would do. Thus, comparing containers to VM, a container is lighter, more ethereal, which obviously allows us to run more, sufficiently more containers than VM in the same server. What is a Kubernetes uh, as a container? A container is closely knitted with a kernel, right? The container doesn't really know what is really how happening outside of the kernel, uh, that is uh, on the host machine. Uh, that is where Kubernetes come in. Kubernetes bring orchestration and container management on the server uh, clusters. In other words, Kubernetes allow you to support multiple kernels and therefore help you manage containers on different uh, Linux machines, whether be it uh, physical, virtual, cloud, whatever it may be, and wherever it may be. Kubernetes orchestration functionalities uh, allows you to create application services either front-end or back-end application services, that too on many uh, containers. Kubernetes also would help you manage execution of these containers in cluster, in a cluster actually, and guarantee their integrity over time, and finally helping you monitoring the health of your container system. And with, uh, with, this, uh, with Kubernetes, the developer doesn't have to wait uh, for a long time for the system admin to uh, launch, manage the VM. They can, they can directly access a runtime environment, uh, that is where the container is to be deployed uh, with the code in just a matter of seconds. With Kubernetes, uh, no one has to be bothered to a certain extent uh, with uh, underlying infrastructural layers like uh, we don't need to know where the application are it's there it's working and it's it's fast okay now let's see the basic components of uh, the kubernetes uh, architecture first there's a kubernetes master which is a server controlling the nodes the nodes are here those nodes are slave nodes which are in fact machine hosting containers inside a pod executing the defined roles a pod now 
is a runtime environment of one or more containers. So in a pod, it can be one container, two or three, uh, whatever. And is yeah, and is it is uh, a master that's going to tell which nodes are going to run which pod. Not in any specific order, but it's rather based on which nodes have how many resources available. So, in all, the Kubernetes master, which is a mostly a JSON API and can be controlled by the user via the kubectl kube command, the master manages the workload on each node, ensuring that there's no no resource resources are consumed in ex excess. So how does to accomplish this Kubernetes needs to know the available resources, obviously, and those currently assigned on the server. How does a master get that information? It's provided by many services called kubelets. Kubelets, uh, kubelets, sorry. The kubelet is a component executed on nodes. It's on every node and it ensures that defined containers have started and are operating as expected. If this fails, the kubelet uh, component will report back to the master. And uh, then that's the, exactly the duty of the master to check the number of identical copies demanded by a pod to run in a cluster. In this way, the master also manages the resilience of the pods. I'm going to elaborate a bit on uh, the resilience of the pods. For example, the two pods in green are duplicate, right? This way is defined to the master that the two pods should be cloned in this cluster. This as a whole is a cluster. And based on resources available, the master decided to clone uh, on node 1 and node B. Now, if node number 2 fails, Kubernetes will then auto-manage and execute a clone of pod A in a node where there is enough, resource, enough resources to spawn that, port, that pod. Uh, that's horizontal scaling. So, node 2 fails. Kubelet uh, informs the master and the master will spawn uh, the pod instantly to another node where there is free resources. Now uh, a bit more detail about uh, what's inside a pod. A pod like I've said is a runtime container which can contain more one or more containers. Uh, this is examples that uh, you're looking at here shows two containers within a pod. We are going to deploy two containers in one pod and it is necessary uh, that they say share the same resources. That is indeed all the containers in a pod share the same IP, the same network ports and other resources of the pod. Another important concept is called volume sharing. What is a volume sharing? A volume sharing is a storage space accessible to all containers on a pod and is useful in two ways. The first one being the ability to preserve data beyond the life cycle of a container. Those who are used to container would know that uh, container data in containers are ephemeral, which is they don't they, they are short lived. Uh, if you want to preserve data within that container. Uh, so that when you stop it and uh, start it again, data is still there, you really have to mount uh, that volume. And secondly, the vol a volume is necessary for the sharing of data between two containers. So when you have multiple containers like this setup executing, executed in the same pod, you definitely have to mount a volume so that uh, data can be shared between them to them. Actually. So, another major component is uh, another major core of Kubernetes is uh, Humanity Service, 
which is a load balancer that can bring traffic down to a, just a collection of pods. The, services, the service knows how to take traffic from either the outside world or from it could be as well from another service in that particular cluster and it load balances the traffic from inside the container. Kubernetes is Kubernetes also provide routing services. Uh, no, Kubernetes is going to provide routing services by assigning an IP and a domain name, like you can see here, to a service, which will balance the load of the load of the traffic to the different nodes. The service requests are then transferred to the Kubernetes uh, by the Kubernetes to the pods. That the role that is the role of a service. It's to it is to transfer the request from the Kubernetes uh, master to the pods. The services uh, can correspond to or do correspond to application that is either web server uh, or backend databases. Uh, finally, after all this, uh, we will have a bit a global overview of the function of how Kubernetes work as a whole. So Kubernetes runs above the OS and interacts with the container pods that runs on nodes. The most uh, Kubernetes uh, server receive API calls from a Kubernetes admin or a DevOps and relay those instructions to nodes. Like we've seen this system work uh, with component, it is called serv Kubernetes services. The suitable node for set talks will be selected automatically and the resources required will be allocated to the pods in the node. When the master plants a pod in a node, the kubelet of that node orders podman to launch the necessary containers and it's podman that's going to start and stop uh, the container. The kubelet collects the status of the containers via podman and inform the master server to check if everything is in in order, everything is working correctly. From this workflow, we notice that the orders to the pods comes from an automated system rather than a system administrator going on pod by pod manually assigning tasks and spawning pods within the nodes for each and every application container. This is fully, more or less fully automated. Uh, yeah, so these are the top 10 Kub Kubernetes distros. Kubernetes has become the project to turn to if you need a container orchestration at a scale. Kubernetes also is sprawling complex and difficult to set up and configure. <laughs> Trust me, I've been there. Not only that, but much of the heavy lifting is left to the end user. So the best approach isn't to grab bits by bits and trying to install a Kubernetes server on your own, trying to go the lone path, but be easy on your, go easy on yourself, seek out a complete container solution that includes Kubernetes as a supported maintained component. Personally, I use OpenSUSE Cubic project, but you can also go, it's, I've been a long time OpenSUSE user. So I'm very acquainted to the commands and all, it's easy. Ah, now, next up, we are going to tr configure, configuring Kubernetes is an exercise in defining objects in a YAML file. While it's not required, it is nice to have an edit editor that can at least understand YAML you can find a plugin for Vim and VS Code. You can they can read the syntax, and it's even better if you know the language itself. Kubernetes YAML, YAML like they say, is it's very descriptive and powerful if you're used to something. But if you're used like me, I used to be satisfied with just uh, put man command, put man run, then the transition. Uh, to YAML description can be, for lack of a better word, a pain in the ass. 
these these are recent conversations that were centered around orchestration on how uh, the developers can help get users from Podman to orchestrating their own containers with Kubernetes. And uh, good news, a recent contribution to Libpod has started to deliver that uh, very idea. Podman can now uh, capture the description of local pods and container and then help users transition to a more sophisticated orchestration environment like Kubernetes. So it's very easy now to, from your basic understanding of Podman, you can transition to Kubernetes. Uh, I'm going to show you in a second. I think Podman is the first container at, uh, runtime to take this scenario seriously and not depend on third party tools. When considering how to implement something like this, we should consider full the following development user workflow. Uh, how the procedure works, the first thing is that tries to create a container pod locally using Podman on the command line, like you can see here. Uh, then they are going to verify this uh, pods or containers locally in a localized container runtime or on a different uh, physical machine. Then you have to take a snapshot of the container or pod description using Podman and help recreate them use in Kubernetes. It's basically an export import uh, thing. Then user add sophistication and orchestration where Podman cannot uh, uh, to the snapshot description and leverage on advanced function of Kubernetes. Enough talking, uh, this is the workflow for moving uh, Podman Pod uh, infrastructure to uh, Kubernetes. I'm going to show you a demo. Uh, here I have a simple Podman container running Nginx and binding to the host port uh, 8000 and the containers 80 port and with a curl you can pick up a response which says podman rules now that we have a pod container running we are going to generate a kubernetes yaml file from that uh, podman pod our container outside the pod we use a recently added podman generate cube command now we can perform the snapshot of that container which will generate the Kubernetes YAML because uh, we are testing this on the network. We will also ask Podman to generate a service file. After that, we have our YAML file which has been exported and we are going to import it in Kubernetes using the kubectl command. Uh, we've cap captured each Podman pod as the YAML, they've gone that YAML, and we use this command to to import it. And once we have uh, the file, we can recreate the container slash pods in Kubernetes. And now for the final result, we can check that uh, we can check the results and see if Podman rules. And yes, it does. So that's it. That was the demo for exporting a Kubernetes YAML file from existing Podman pods and then importing them uh, and running them as a service in uh, Kubernetes. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you very much, Tej, for uh, the second part of the presentation where you talked about Kubernetes. Uh, it's uh, uh, you know what, Tish? It's only now that I'm realizing. Actually, I I, I missed the slide. You know the slide about uh, uh, microOS and Kubernetes, where I say that Kubernetes is the uh, cubic is the Kubernetes distribution, and microOS is where you will only have Podman. God. Yeah. You know this this happens when we when you how do you call that? Uh, when you try to work on your presentation still late night. Still late night, yes. Thank, With very little coffee. Thank you guys for hosting uh, this session. Uh, thank you, Gurish. Um, uh, yeah, so I have been experimenting mostly with containers, Podman, 
And with Kubernetes, the uh, challenge has been for me personally is to understand as a system engineer, I know how my VMs works together and where all the servers, how, how what is the architecture exactly. And with Kubernetes, it's a different uh, architecture, which is very container friendly. And uh, as you have seen, you can also pull put man containers into uh, into a YAML file, which you can uh, scale up. Uh, I'm also looking forward to set up a local Kubernetes group. So those who have, if you anybody has any question in the chat, you can connect with me on Twitter. Uh, it's uh, at Ketchup and. Uh, uh, yeah, send me a message if you want to join the Kubernetes local group. What I was about to add uh, on this is that, um, yeah, uh, Chitesh, ha Chitesh has been experimenting with Kubernetes uh, very recently, and uh, the point of this presentation was for him to share what he has learned so far. And uh, for me, I, as usual, sharing my passion uh, as an enthusiast, uh, of uh, OpenSUSE and Podmine. So yes, Chitesh uh, is planning to, to start this Kubernetes group. Uh, uh, Chitesh, would you mind telling uh, our audience that we got a bag, a box rather, a box of Kubernetes goodies for oh, DevCon, yeah. but unfortunately, because the conference is oh. not physical, we're keeping yeah. this for next time. Maybe I'll, I'll yeah. let you give some more details. Yeah, so I have contacted uh, CNCF, uh, which uh, which manages Kubernetes. Uh, cloud, for, cloud native, cloud native, foundation. cloud native, exactly, exactly. So for DevCon, which was supposed to happen in, uh, this year at uh, Codon, unfortunately due to COVID, we have a box, uh, box of goodies, which uh, nobody is claiming. You can claim, claim, uh, pre-claim it. And when we meet next time at the, hey, at the conference, uh, listen, right. Stage, uh, I propose something. This is what we are going to do. We do. We already have the box of goodies, right? So what we are going to do? Anybody who wants to claim uh, a goodie, all right? They just have to tweet uh, about it, but they need to put the hashtag Kubernetes, DevConMU, and Mauritius, right? Three hashtags. Mm. I say it again. Three hashtags. Tell us that. Uh, tell us what you've been doing with Kubernetes so far, even if you're just experimenting, or if you're running Kubernetes in production. And in uh, your tweet, you have to use the hashtag number one, Kubernetes. Number two, DevConMU. Number three, Mauritius. All right, guys. How does that work, Stish? Yeah, I mean that's a great idea. Good. Okay, let's see how many tweets we can get and uh, who are the ones who are going to claim their uh, goodies. All right, guys, so uh, I think we can move on with the uh, with the conference, with the other sessions. Thank you very much, Chitesh, uh, for, for yeah. hopping into our stream and spending some time with us.